we go, Miss Katie. It floor is all yours. Away we go. Thank you so much. Good morning again, everybody. Great to see you. Thanks for joining me again. We see some faces that I have seen the past couple of days. I'm happy that you're all here. This uh, I see in chat. This is the third session this week. We have Monday and Tuesday. This is our third session this week. Yes, you've got it. So let me share my screen to start us off so we know what we're doing. Share, there we go. And slideshow. Let me know in chat if you can see my screen. That announces Water Week. Water Week, Water Week. You can see it. Yes, it's day three. We are in the middle of Water Week. Oh, yeah. I like the thumbs up. Thanks, gang. How are we feeling today? What are we feeling right now as we get ready to roll into our Wednesday, day three of Water Week? How are we feeling? Oh, William and Isaac are ready. Woo, I've got some turtles. Okay, thanks, Nate. Love it. Thank you, smiling Nilla. Okay, all right. I'll take them. Looking good, Elise. I see some smiles on the camera as well. I'm smiling. I am excited for today. Maybe you're not sure, quite, quite sure how you're feeling. That's understandable too, and that's okay. We can hopefully get some smiles. Maybe some chuckles, feeling good as we go through our lesson today. All right, first off, let's start with our joke of the day today. And here we go. Who's ready? What do you call an old snowman? What do you call an old snowman? Go ahead and put your guess in chat. Hmm. I see a beard on this guy on the screen. Oh man, this one was too easy for you guys, wasn't it? An old snowman. All those answers are good. A puddle, melted, or just water. Oh, easy peasy. An old snowman is just water, isn't it? Poor guy. He doesn't look too happy down there. But he'll be back because remember, we have the water cycle always going, going, going. So our snowman will return. Speaking of the water cycle, who can tell me some words you remember that we've been learning this week or that you already knew and we were recapping? He was on the ground. Yeah, his nose was there, right? His little carrot nose. What are some words we remember about the water cycle? What are those different parts when, oh, good one, precipitation, condensation. Wow, great job, you guys. Good work, Nilla, Tristan, and Grayson. Way to go. How about, oh man, you guys got it. You read my mind. Evaporation is the other one, yeah when our liquid water gets heated up and it turns to water vapor, that is evaporation. And then it comes up and starts to cool off up in the sky in the atmosphere as it cools off. It's called condensation and it becomes the clouds. And when all of those old water droplets hang out with their buddies and they're building these clouds bigger, 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 suddenly there's just too many of them and they all come on back down to earth. And that's precipitation. They join us down here on Earth again and keep going around and around and around. No beginning, no end. It's just a circle or cycle that keeps going. Great job, you guys. So today, here's what we need. Um, we need our clear cup. 
that we filled at the beginning of the week. If you don't have that, or if you did um, do that and it got spilled, maybe that's okay. You can check out mine and I'll share mine with you to just see what's been going on with that cup of water. We are going to need the ice tray that we did yesterday. So we prepped something yesterday. We filled up an ice tray with water. We put some food coloring into some of those blocks of our ice tray, and then we put it into our freezer. I haven't looked yet. Did anybody peek? Did anybody peek into their uh, ice tray yesterday? I didn't peek, so I don't know what's going on in there. But I'm going to get that in a little bit. I don't want to get it yet because what's going to happen to it if I get it now? So we're going to start melting a little bit too much. And I don't want that to happen yet. So I'm going to grab that in a little. We're going to need a piece of paper or a few pieces of paper. And possibly some um, plastic gloves or something that you may have to keep your hands from getting too messy. Um, but if they do get messy, mine got messy the other day. I went and cleaned them up and everything was A-OK. -okay. So I'm okay with getting messy a little bit. That's up to you and uh, mom or dad. So we'll work on those things in a little bit. First up, our cup right here. Let me share with you. I'm not gonna be able to hold it um, level, but I want you to see what I have so far. I kind of labeled mine too. So on Monday, when we started, with our glass, I put a line at our water level and I labeled it Monday. And then yesterday when we took a look at it, I put a, a water line here with my marker. And do you notice that our line came down a little bit? We talked about that yesterday and that is because of evaporation, right? Some of that water is leaving this cup. It is getting heated up and floating out into the sky. So I'm going to put a new mark for today. Now, when I look at my cup, so yesterday, I don't know what was going on in your neck of the woods yesterday, but I had some serious thunderstorms yesterday. It was very humid. You know that feeling when it's humid and it's kind of almost, you could describe it as thick air outside. That's humid. And that's just a lot of water vapor in the air. And maybe some birds or insects might be drinking a little bit of it as well. Absolutely. Because we are leaving it out there outside for some critters to possibly get into it. Um, so yesterday I had a, a lot, a lot of rain. And I noticed when I look at my water level here, it did not go down a whole, whole lot. And I think that's because it was so humid yesterday. There was so much water vapor in the air already. So it didn't really go down a whole lot, but I'm going to make my new mark for today. So there's a little bit of movement of that water, but not as much as there was from Monday to Tuesday. We'll see what happens today. We'll check that out. So I'm going to leave this out. I'm going to find a nice sunny spot. I'm going to leave it out all day in the sunshine and try to make sure that if it does rain again, I take it inside, um, trying to make sure that it doesn't it's not in a spot that it's going to get bumped by someone or something. Either she's going down fast, Tristan and Grayson. Oh, that's cool. I would love to see. Feel free to share on your camera all the marks that you're making. That's really neat to see that. Very cool, guys. It's so neat because we don't see it happening, right? Oh, very nice. I see it, you guys. Yeah, yours is moving. Excellent. So you can see that movement, even though you're not seeing the movement. So each day we're not seeing water droplets come out of 
Nice. We're not seeing the water droplets come out of the cup throughout the day at all. We just see this cup sitting here with water and we think, oh, it's still there. Okay. And then wake up the next day and take a look and wait a minute, some of it, it has disappeared. Huh. How about that? So evaporation is happening. Whether we see it or not, it is happening. Great job, gang. So you can put the marker your cup and everything to the side now. And what we're, what we're going to do next is take a look at a video. So I am going to pull that up. Let's see. You can still see my screen, right? Oh, you know what? I got, I have to reshare this so I can hit the share sound button. Let me do that real quick. Make sure I am sharing the sound. And we're going to watch a quick little brain pop video. I love Moby. Here we go. For not to think about it. Touchdown in T minus five minutes. Yeah, I guess that's enough time to answer a letter. We're trying to make movies shorter these days anyway. Dear Rita and Moby, where does the water and rain come from? From Theron. Hi, Theron. Every drop of rain has been on a fantastic journey. It could have come from the depths of the ocean or the peak of a mountain, or a river, a lake, an underground spring or even from a plant or an animal. All the water on, under, and above Earth's surface is connected. It constantly moves from place to place through the water cycle. It rises up into the sky, moves through the air, and comes back down to Earth's surface. But the total amount of water on Earth stays the same, because it never leaves the planet, except for the tiny bit we take up to space. The water cycle is driven by two powerful engines, the sun and gravity. The sun powers one part of the cycle, moving water upward. Its heat causes water particles to break free from each other and escape into the atmosphere. It's called evaporation, and it turns liquid water into gas, known as water vapor. Most evaporation happens in the ocean since that's where most of the water is. But water evaporates from all surfaces exposed to air. Rivers, glaciers, puddles. It also evaporates from plants, in a process called transpiration. And even the surface of our skin. That's why we get thirsty quicker when we're out in the sun. Water vapor is lighter than air, so it rises. But the higher it goes, the colder it gets. Eventually, the vapor cools so much that it turns into tiny drops of liquid water again. That's condensation. Condensation is like evaporation in reverse. Heating liquid water turns it into gas. Cooling gaseous water turns it back into liquid. These microscopic droplets collect together into clouds, which may look light and puffy, but they can hold millions of pounds of water. Despite their massive weight, they get blown all over the place, like the storm clouds that travel thousands of miles every hurricane season. Eventually, the water droplets and clouds grow too heavy to stay up in the air. This is where gravity comes into play, powering the other part of the cycle. Gravity pulls those droplets down to Earth's surface in the form of precipitation. It can be rain or snow or hail or sleet, depending on the temperature. Gravity's downward pull continues even after water hits the ground. Some of it gets absorbed into bodies of groundwater, the water that's underground in the soil, and some flows downhill as runoff until it empties into rivers, lakes, and oceans. Yeah, all that moving water is a powerful force. It can completely change the world around us through weathering, the breakdown of rocks into tiny bits, and erosion, the movement of these bits from one place to another. This has been going on for millions of years, little by little, how the Colorado River carved out the Grand Canyon, and how the oceans formed the White Cliffs of Dover in England. Rivers can also shape land through flooding. When rivers overflow, they deposit fresh soil into surrounding areas, called floodplains. 
floodplains are perfect for farming, which is why people often settle around rivers. More globally, water helps regulate Earth's temperature. Two-thirds of its surface is covered by oceans, which absorb tons of heat from the sun and keep the planet cool. Well, it's salt water, so we can't use it for drinking or farming. Fresh water makes up only about 3% of all the water on Earth, and most of it is frozen in ice or trapped underground. We only have access to about 1% of it. That's 1% of the 3%, a tiny amount. The water cycle lets us keep using that teeny bit of fresh water over and over again. It's like a natural recycling system. Without the water cycle, we wouldn't have rain, or rivers, or plants, or life of any kind. Touchdown in five. Uh oh, brace four, for impact! Three. Gonna have to hold it. All right, thank you for sharing that video with me. So there was a little extra information that we've learned a little about the water cycle. Wait, there is not a lot of fresh water on Earth for us, huh? Thank goodness. We can recycle that water and reuse it over and over. But think about it, all the water that is on planet Earth has always been here. So we're kind of using the same water that the dinosaurs used, right? This water has been here for as long as Earth's been here. We're just using that same water over and over and over and over again, wild. All right, let's head into our next activity. It is time for our Ice trays. So what I'm going to do is I have to get up from my seat. You probably do too, to go grab your ice tray. Make sure you have your papers and uh, whatever other materials you may need to keep things kind of cleaned up. Maybe you're putting down some newspapers or something to keep a, a table from getting too dirty whatever you may need. I'm going to grab my stuff as well. I'll meet you back here in about 30 seconds, everybody. Okay, ready, set, go. I'm back. Are you back? Oh, I see on camera some people sharing what they have. Let me show you. So here's mine from yesterday. Like I said, I didn't even peek yet. So I'm going to remove my plastic wrap very carefully so that I don't pull my toothpicks out of it. And I did leave some of my ice cube tray and with a clear water. I didn't put any food coloring in some of these ice cubes. Okay. Almost there. Ooh, look at all of my little different colors. How cool. Do you guys have some of the same? Remember yesterday how we did, we mixed some colors. We said yellow and blue make green, yellow and red make orange. So we could mix up some of our colors to make different colors. Or we could add a lot of the food dye or just a little to make different, um, different types of blue, like a deep dark blue or a light blue, a deep dark red 
or a light red. So I have all of these different colors. I am going to now crack it open and take a look. So, if your toothpick is staying in there nice and neat, you should be able to use that to help you draw so that your hands aren't getting really dirty. So I have all of my different colors here. And what I'm going to do is obviously grab my paper and start to draw. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to put up a timer. I think it has a waterfall on it, but I'm just going to start drawing with my ice and I'm going to draw whatever I want. You draw whatever you want too. It can be a rainbow. It could be flowers. It could be a horse. It could be your family. It could be the water cycle. You could draw the water cycle again. And listen, you could draw as on as many different sheets of paper as you want to, as many different things as you'd like. It can be just designs, swirlies and twirlies. So when you're ready, go ahead and get started. I am going to share a video. In just a moment. That's going to give us just a timer. So let me see, let me pull this up and share. And we're just going to do some drawing. Here we go. Can't wait to see what you're making. How cool is this? Yeah, fun. Remember when we learned a little bit yesterday, yesterday about our different states of matter with water? What state of matter? Use this water in. This is in solid form, right?
think I got kicked out for a moment. Sorry, gang. Let me reshare. And when you're ready, you can type in chat and let me know if you would like to share your drawing. I drew the water cycle, right? Drawing with your drawings. Would anybody like to share? No. You can draw a little birds. Maybe. I drew one lighter cloud and one darker cloud. The darker cloud has my precipitation. Because once there's so many water droplets up in those clouds, they start to get darker and heavier. And when they're too heavy, we have our liquid form coming down. How are you doing with your drawing? Let me see. Taylor, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Nice job. Oh, I love the sunshine. Anybody else want to share? Oh, Tristan and Grayson, which I don't know which one of you is holding that up, but nice work, buddy. Oh, yeah, there's a storm coming, huh? Love it. Oh, and there's our other, oh, nice tree. Oh, very good. You guys are fabulous artists. Thank you for sharing your work. You on to some new drawings. I see Elisa's busy, 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 busy. Looking good. Nate, did you share yours? I I think I missed it. I saw you. Oh, nice. Oh, and you have that border around to hold it steady. Oh, brilliant. Looking good, Nate. Keep it up. Good work. Thank you for sharing. Oh, you guys are fantastic. Anybody else want to share before we move on? So you can continue doing this, you know, anytime. Lily, let me see. Oh, how cute is that? I love your heart. What cool colors you made. Hector and Amaryllis, look at that. Very nice, you two. Oh, good work, gang. Very impressive. There are so many options with this, aren't there? So you can continue doing this on your own with the, the um, ice that we made here, or you can make a whole brand new one with different colors this time. Elise, moving on. Did you finish that one? Oh, let's see. Still a little runny. Oh, how cute. Look at those colors. Nice job, Elise. Wow, I'm impressed, you guys. Good work. So we have been working with all the different forms of uh, water, haven't we? All the different states of water. When we look every morning, we're talking about the evaporation, even though we don't 
see it happening, really, when it's happening. We know that it is. We work with the liquid form quite often. And then we also, today, are working with our solid form, right? Excellent work. So you can continue to um, work on that. We're going to talk just for a moment about something else that happens with water, something we've talked about already. When water vapor starts to turn back into a liquid, do you remember which word, what big word that is? When we have our water vapor heating up, becoming the gas and going up into the sky, into the clouds, and then it starts to do what? As it cools off and becomes clouds, what happens? What big word is it? Evaporation, condensation, or precipitation? When our water vapor turns back into our water droplets, it starts to cool off. Remember? Awesome job. Condensation. Let's watch a couple of videos about that real quick. Let me make sure you can hear this video. Let me know if it plays. Have you seen dewdrops on a leaf on a cold morning? Have you wondered how dewdrops are formed? Observe this activity and you will be able to understand dewdrops. We need ice, water, and a glass. Put some ice and water into a clean, dry glass. Now let the glass rest for some time. You will soon see a misty layer of water on the outer surface of the glass. Now wait a little while longer and observe. Small droplets of water coalesce and run down the surface of the glass. The water droplets are formed when water vapor in the air cools and changes into water when it meets the cold surface of the glass. This process of changing from the gaseous state to the liquid state is called condensation. It is the opposite process of evaporation. Now, can you explain how dewdrops form? Dewdrops are droplets of water that have condensed have on the cool leaf surface from water vapor in the air. Can you think of any other examples of condensation? Can you? Have you seen Whoops. dewdrops? Stop talking. Can you think of any other examples where you might see condensation happening? Think a little bit more. I'm going to share one more part of a video here showing condensation. It's a time lapse video, which means somebody set up a camera and they sat it there for a while. And then to show it with us, they speed it up a little bit so that we see the process happening a little quicker. So we're going to watch that happen. Take a look at that bottle. You see it happening? Oh, let's go. Oops, there we go. Look at that. As those little droplets start to come together, they get bigger and heavier and start to fall down. Right? Cool. Have you seen these things happen? Where else may you have seen? this besides on a water bottle or a glass or something can you think of any other places that you might see condensation maybe around your house somewhere maybe a particular room in your house any ideas what about you're taking a bath or a shower. Do you ever notice anything on the mirror or the windows in your bathroom? Or maybe even on your windows, <laughs> on your windows of your house. Maybe when it's really cold outside, but warm inside, or vice versa, you might start to see something like that. If your car is outside, Overnight, when you come back out to it, 
and things are starting to warm up. You might see some condensation on the windows of the car, right? Does anybody do anything fun with that condensation when you see it on the mirrors or the windows? Does anybody draw anything in there or is it just me? I do it all the time. I draw hearts, I write hi and write smile, draw smiley faces. Do you do that too? <laughs> yeah, me too. So we actually see condensation occurring around us. Next time you get a shower or a, a bath and it's starting to steam up a little, you see that condensation, check it out. Make a note to yourself, hey, condensation happening right now. Woohoo! Okie doke. Let's do a quick little wrap up. And yes, I know some of you asked earlier, do we have a Kahoot today? Yes, we're going to do a Kahoot today to wrap up. So let me grab that and get that started. Possibly. Let's see. Give me a second to grab our link. <laughs> Taking a while. Taking its good old time. Who is often a little slow for me. But hopefully for our game, it won't be so slow. It'll move and groove. Here we go. States of matter. I'm going to copy and paste into chat the link and the game pin for you. Of course, you can probably just look and grab it yourself. I'm ready. Okay. There we go. I don't know why it won't let me do a link. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out, Lily. Good question. I wonder if... Oh, thank you so much. Camp Director Sheik to the rescue. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Jake and John. Awesome. So, by the way, fun little tidbit for all of you uh, fans of learning. When you are in chat, you will see on the bottom there's some different um, icons. There's one that says screenshot, one that says file, one with emojis. We all know about the emojis. So file is how you show your pictures if you take a picture and want to show your picture. Uh, screenshot is if you, you know, you guys don't have to worry about that. But for Miss Katie, I'm sure you know that. Format is what you click on, and that's where you'll see all the different ways you can format something, including add a link. I see. Perfect. So that's Thank also you, how you sir. make stuff bold. So if I want to say, you know, Hey, I love this class because all of you are awesome, but I want to make it bold. That way you guys really see it. That's how you do it. Or if I want to say something like one plus one equals three, which that's not right. And strike it out so that way people know that's not correct. Uh -huh. That's the way you do that too. So fun little, little lesson on chat. I love it. Thank you. Now we know. <laughs> Get a little extra learning in today. Oh boy, I see so many of our friends joining us. I love the names. I love the avatars that we're choosing. So cute. So if you are unable to join the live game in Kahoot, don't worry. You can just take a look at what we're doing here on the screen and play along with us. So we're going to get started now and get through our game. Ready, set. Ooh, states of matter. Three, two, one. 
What is water called when it is solid? What were we just using to paint with? Starting off be easy, right? Solid water. And our friends in chat are helping. Thank you. It's ice. Yeah. When water is solid, it is ice. Boom. Nailed it. Off to a great start, gang. Keep it going. All right. Next one. The process of heating up water until it changes to a gas or water vapor. There's your hint, vapor. Because we didn't really talk too much, but I threw that in there as a hint. Vapor is vaporizing, like evaporation. Heating up, evaporation, vaporizing, water vapor, a little tricky. Had to throw a tricky one in there. Next one, the process of cooling down water until it becomes solid ice is called what? When something becomes ice, we're making it so cold, it's what? <laughs> yeah, we got it, freezing, right. Excellent. And the process of heating a solid until it becomes a liquid. So going from ice to water, what's that called? What was happening to our ice cubes being out here? When you have an ice cube and you set it out, it starts to do what? To become a liquid, melting, excellent. Keep it coming. What do you need to change a solid or ice into a liquid? So to go from ice to liquid, do we need to heat it up or to make it really cold? To go from ice to liquid. Great, yes, we need heat. What is it called when water vapor has changed? To a liquid, or when ooh, when gas becomes clouds, c -c clouds. When water vapor changes to a liquid, when that gas becomes a cloud, cloud what? Oh, trying to give you that clue with the. C sound, condensation, clouds. Next one, almost done. You're doing great, everyone. Water is a solid liquid gas or water. Water is a water, but is it a solid liquid or gas? Regular old water. Not ice. So not, oh, right. It is a liquid, right? When it's a solid, we call it ice. When it's a gas, we call it water vapor. Perfect. What is it called when a puddle of water becomes water vapor? What's happening? When a puddle of water becomes water vapor. So it's heating up, becoming water vapor. What process is that? A little clue. There's a V here. Vapor. Do you see that word? Yes. Evaporation. Awesome. I got to stop giving clues. You guys know all this stuff already. Right? I know. We do. Okay. A couple more. For evaporation to happen, what do we need? Do we, need heat? do we need heat or do we need it to be cool or cold for evaporation? Which one do you think we need? Yes, of course, we need heat to heat it up, turn it into water vapor. And finally, 
For vapor to turn back into a liquid, what do we need? So when that water vapor goes up into the clouds, what starts to happen? Cloud, it condenses, condensation. I'm not giving you clues, nope. <laughs> We need for it to cool down a little more. So from a gas back to a liquid, we need to cool it down a little. Great job, gang. Let's see, how's it looking? Oh, look at that cutie. Nice. Oh, I love the goggles. Yes, yes, and... Oh my gosh, look at that avatar. And some runners up, excellent. Oh my goodness, you guys, awesome work. Woo, give yourself the hand, yeah. You know your stuff, you know your states of matter, don't you? Nice job. All right, to end today, just a reminder of what we are going to need tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be jam packed, I think. We need a lot of stuff for tomorrow, if you have it, okay? Let me move my stuff. So we still need that clear cup that's filled up with water to see if there's been any more evaporation happening. We're also going to need a cup, some water, and some shaving cream, and then some of our food coloring again. We're going to need if possible, three separate cups of water. I threw this extra one in here. Um, it wasn't something I had planned earlier, but I figure everybody has cups at home and water and salt, pepper, and sugar. So hopefully we'll be able to do that one. If not, you'll just be able to watch me and do that at a later time when you watch the recording. And then and we're finally getting to this one. At least two cups of water. And if you can, use um, like mugs or glasses instead of plastic for this one. So make sure you get permission and you have somebody nearby working with you on that. And then also a striking object. So for example, I could use my marker, something to just tap, but not break. So you could use a spoon, a fork, a drumstick if you have it, a pencil, a marker, Anything like that. You could even use probably your uh, your fingernail. Tap it as well. Okay, so we've got a lot going on tomorrow. Are you excited for tomorrow? There's so much happening. Oh, we've got a lot going on. I'm excited for it. We're getting near the end of Water Week, but we are going to do some fun activities to wrap up our week together. So I'm excited to see you again. Thank you everybody for being here with me today and participating. I hope you had a good time and I'm excited to see you again tomorrow. See ya. Hang on for the next activity and I'll see you soon.